bird-like drones, new exoskeleton technology, hyper-realistic game graphics, augmented reality car dashboards and much more. This is MOSFET Weekly. The bird drone company based in the Netherlands make fairly realistic fixed wing drones that look like birds. They have a range of different style bird drones, which have a variety of use cases. Bigger seagull shaped variations are designed for unobtrusive surveillance, can fly up to 10,000 feet and have integrated daylight and IR cameras. They also have smaller falcon styled bird of prey drones which are used for bird control since most other birds are terrified of these predators. As soon as they see the silhouette circling in the sky, they leave a given area. Currently this is being used as a way to keep birds from flying into wind farms which are notorious for taking out unsuspecting avians. In keeping with the animal theme, Drone to Home is a charity serving the East Midlands area of the UK which helps find missing dogs with drones. Founded by ex-police officer Phil James, the charity says so far it has found and reunited almost 1,500 pets with their owners. In many cases, dogs will make their way to wooded or dense grassy areas, and they say the thermal cameras on their DJI drones are an extremely helpful tool for finding them, especially in low-light situations. Another week, another 3D printing process. Belgian 3D printer manufacturer Valkoon recently announced that they will begin taking pre-orders for their upcoming Minerva molten metal printer starting in May. The printer uses the company's proprietary molten metal deposition, or MMD technology, which is apparently a new way to print metal. It appears that the system uses spools of aluminium wires much like plastic for FDM printers, but instead of a hot end and extruder, there is a custom crucible which liquefies the metal, before it's squeezed out onto the print bed. Valkun claims this method allows for extreme overhangs up to 70 degrees without needing supports. In other news, I recently came across this little filament maker. Based in Cornwall on the southwest coast of the UK, Fishy Filaments is a project which takes used commercial nylon fishing nets and turns them into 3D printing filaments for FDM printers. According to them, roughly only 1.5% of these nets get recycled around the world, and this was part of the impetus for creating the initiative. The team hopes to expand and set up small modular recycling plants for fishing communities around the world, incentivizing them to create a new product out of what would have been plastic waste. Moving over to automation, researchers in Italy, from Florence, Modena and Pisa universities, have released a pre-published paper exploring the use of these models in fashion. Utilising latent diffusion models, their system is aimed at human-centric generation of images, making it easy for fashion designers to use a mixture of prompts such as text, human body poses and garment sketches to quickly generate realistic-looking fashion illustrations. The team has set up a GitHub page where they will be posting more source code and technical information in the future. I think hyper-specific use cases for AI tools like this will be dramatically increasing throughout all industries very soon. Boston Dynamics recently uploaded a new video showing how their Spot Quadruped bot is already apparently working in various industries, from manufacturing to construction, mining, oil, gas and power, to name a few. There's not much detail and I'd be curious to learn exactly what they're doing and why it makes sense for these companies to buy this hardware to carry out tasks that presumably were functioning fine with human workers. In other news, a team at the University of Washington's Robot Learning Lab have been working on DARPA's racer program to develop fully autonomous off-road driving buggies with a long-term view for this kind of technology being deployed in combat situations. During the most recent experiments in March, the UW team and others completed more than 55 driverless runs of between roughly 4 and 11 miles each, reaching speeds of about 25 miles per hour. Off-road autonomous driving is significantly more unpredictable compared to on the road, and the teams put the vehicles through their paces on steep slopes, in ditches, over rocks and vegetation, and in ever-changing weather conditions. YouTuber Art from the Machine uploaded an interesting video of a Skyrim VR mod they've been working on. It integrates ChatGPT and allows for more realistic conversations with the NPCs in the game. The latest update introduces Skyrim scripting, which allows for lip-syncing of voices, as well as NPC awareness of in-game events. There's not much other information, so keep an eye on this YouTube channel for more. 
I wonder how long it will be until a major developer integrates something similar into a big title. Sticking with gaming, I've seen a lot of buzz about this game over the past week, though there's not a lot of information. What we do know is Unrecord is a body cam style first person shooter which uses Unreal Engine 5 to create a very realistic looking world. I'm aware this could just be a very finely crafted pre-render and not indicative of what the final game will be like, but even still, this is the first time I can remember seeing a game trailer and wondered whether this is real or not. Maybe I'm wrong, can you think of any others? In other news, AR company Invisix has received over $50 million in funding for its AR heads-up display technology. The funding comes from automotive giants Hyundai and Jaguar, amongst others, and aims to bring their holographic augmented reality heads-up displays to more cars. According to their press release, General Motors will be the first car company to deploy the AR HUD, including it in the upcoming Cadillac Lyric in 2024. We have a couple interesting hardware developments this week. Firstly, a team at the University of Chicago came up with an interesting way to mimic touch for VR applications, but unlike regular haptic gloves, their system applies electric zaps to the top of the hand only, leaving the palm and fingertips free. They explained that when electric current is passed through the top of the hand, it travels through the tissue and activates nerve endings in the bottom of the hand. Since there are way more nerve endings on this lower side, it creates a believable sensation. This could prove to be a useful tool for mixed reality, as the user still can naturally pick up and feel real-life objects. Some of those same University of Chicago researchers have also developed Jump Mod as a way to modify a user's sense of vertical momentum. It does this by sliding a weight on the person's back as they move up or down, and they say that it can mimic five distinct sensations including a feeling of jumping higher, being pulled higher or lower, and landing harder or softer. Though it's a bit clunky right now, I could definitely imagine this kind of concept as part of a smaller backpack, integrating other features for standalone headsets like extra battery and torso haptic feedback. Staying with jumping technology, researchers from the University of Michigan College of Engineering designed a powered exoskeleton which attached to a pair of boots the user wears, adding extra spring to their lower legs. They tested this out against a collegiate level high jumper, and though they didn't end up beating him, those who tested it gained about two extra inches on their vertical leap. In other exoskeleton news, Auxivo recently unveiled their new Delta Suit shoulder supporting exoskeleton. The new augmentation is designed to support any worker who needs to work at or above shoulder level throughout the day, and they say it provides a range of benefits, including reduced load on the shoulder and neck muscles and reduced fatigue. The exoskeleton combines soft and hard parts, and in terms of performance, it reduces shoulder muscle load by up to 65%, and muscle fatigue by up to 75%. Its list price is €2,290, and will be available for businesses to purchase soon. And ending this week, researchers from Duke University have developed the multi-camera array microscope, which combines an array of mini digital microscopes, automatically stitching them together to create gigapixel-sized videos and images. The system can also record 3D movies too, gathering height information due to the multiple views from the separate cameras, and the team believes this device is opening up new possibilities to scientists around the world. Check out their project page and GitHub for more information. Alright, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe to this channel or check out mosfet.net.